Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to put the fill-in into the wings for the 2019 Angel. Now we're all around this skirt you will have been uh, doing the 8 thread Agure. Um, I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced but I'm sure somebody's going to correct me. So it basically looks very much like a rose ground in that you have four pinholes and four pairs come in from the four pins above them. Um, just to clarify, there are about 16 different ways of making a rose ground and they're all completely different. But the traditional one is where you do the cross stitch and twist here and here before you start doing any of the pins. Well, this one doesn't have that. You go straight into the pins. So you put the half stitch of two centre pairs and pin up as you've done, as I've done here. You don't close the pin. You then do the two left hand pairs and pin up again, not closing the pin. The two right hand pairs and pin up and you don't close the pin uh, again. Then you'll do the two centre pairs in half stitch. Now, if you're doing the wings, this is the point where you will add the bead. Then you go back to the left hand pairs and close the left hand uh, pin with a half stitch. The same on the right, you close the right hand pin and then you do the bottom pin, pin four, you half stitch the two centre pairs, you pin up, but you don't close it. So this is very unusual to what you're used to with um, doing regular torsion because you're used to closing pins and you're with a regular rose ground, you're used to doing the stitches where you, you don't pin anything up, you do the cross stitch and twist. So these instructions are all in the instructions on the um, pattern. So you can um, have the pattern with you and you can follow it through um, here. So what happens when you get to the wings is that the wings are shaped. The, the skirt is complete patterns all the way round. But because the wings come into a narrow point down here, and I've blown this up for you. Um, the, you end up with half or parts of the pattern. So if, if I show you this side, you can see it easily here. Um, so this one here, you've only got three pins of your four. This point here, you've just got two and you've just got two. Now, you could do this easily and just ignore the pattern when you get to these part of the um, pattern and just do them as half stitch pin half stitch but ideally what happens with lace is you you want to continue the pattern so if you think of a dressmaking fabric and you've cut it out the pattern continues right up until the seam edge but we want to complete this illusion that this is also part of the pattern and that the pattern continues further on than it actually does. Because if you just do a half stitch pin, you will just get a pair to come down here and down here and down here, uh, and it won't follow the whole pattern of the um, eighth thread amore. So what I've done with this side is I've drawn in lines to show you the way that the pattern lines up with the outside edge. Now, because we've done the wings in half stitch, we can actually use the, the bar between pins to sew pairs in. You can't do this with cross stitch because you would make a hole. But because we've already got a hole there from the half stitch, this makes life a little bit easier in the fact that we don't have to line up the pins in our wings to match the pins in our pattern. So that's why I've drawn the lines here to show you that you can actually sew the pair around the bar here, not just in the pins. Sometimes they line up, which is great, but quite often um, you have to make a decision. If you've got this as cloth stitch, you would have to make the decision as to whether what pin to sew it into. But you don't have to do that because we're in half stitch. And I'll show you what that looks like on the lace. 
Now I'm going to do this one here first. Now I'm not going to put any beads in because um, it, it would distract from the actual making of the whole um, pattern and you wouldn't be able to see the pattern working. So I'm just going to turn my pillow around so that I have this pin here as my top pin. So this is pin one, two, three, four. Now, I just to say, I haven't actually completed the whole of my wing. I wouldn't advise doing that. I would complete the whole wing first. I'm going to show you two methods of sewing in. One is with um, my Lazy Susan, which um, in other videos I've shown you how to use this. It's basically a needle with the um, point of the needle cut off and inserted into this uh, either a screw fix in or into wood and then you're left with the eye of the needle which you thread a piece of thread through and i'm also going to show you i'm going to attempt to make a sewing with a crochet hook something i haven't done for a while um i don't particularly like the crochet hook because i'm a bit heavy-handed and i tend to catch the thread so if we look at our, um, go back to this diagram here, now we could, so I'm going to go with these two first, and I've actually got a green thread here. So I could sew one into that pin if I wanted to, but it's just slightly off centre from that pin. If you imagine a line going down there, it's better off just around this bar. Um, this one here isn't quite so bad, so I will sew that pair into that pinhole. So let's see where they are. So this is the point here. I'm just going to stand my pins up. And depending on how you've put these pins in, you can see that if I drew a straight line down there, that pin there is wildly off from that pin so um, I'm definitely sewing this one around the bar so as I said before because we're in half stitch we've already got holes in this so I'm just going to oh maybe I should have there we go put my crochet hook underneath the bar and then go into um catch my thread through my crochet hook I'm not sure my crochet hook is going to be big enough for this thread but yours will be finer thread so I was trying to use a finer thread a crochet hook there we are so I've pulled it through and there's my loop and I'm going to put one of my bobbins through my loop so that's my first pair sewn in for my pin there and as you can see it comes down in a line i'm just going to put two twists on it and it'll come down in that line so that's how you sew in with a crochet hook so let me just show you on a actual pin hole so you put the crochet hook through now just bear in mind i would never advise using the prick in without the plastic on there the only reason i haven't got the plastic on this is because i didn't want the shine through from the plastic so you wouldn't be able to see what was going on so um, that's the only reason so i'm going to lay my thread across turn my crochet hook round hold my bobbins and pull it through there we are not too bad and um, this is a quicker method because you're not having to um take your lazy susan out on anything and with this thickness of thread it actually works quite well but i have been known to um catch my crochet hook through quite a number of threads and shear off the thread so um uh, the thread's broken and then um, i've had to replace the thread so there we are, there's our um, threads in, and as you can see, they run a fairly straight line. So that's my two right hand ones, and I'm going to use my um, Lazy Susan to show you how to sew in on the other one. 
Now I find this a little bit easier. I'm just going to move that pin a bit in the fact that because we've only got this tiny area of a point, it's a bit easier to put through. So you put it through your hole, pull it back slightly. Um, now this is one, the only thread I will use a pin with because um, generally if you put a pin in a thread, you're likely to go through half the um, thread and not the other half. So I've made a loop. There's my loop. Putting the other bobbin, one of the bobbins through, pulling it out, making sure um, there's no twists on this uh, loop because um, the twists will just add bulk and it won't pull it down straight. Put the other bobbin through and then pull it down. So that pair. Um, once I've got them under control. Okay, two twists. That pair can now go down that line. And you can see because we've already got a hole from our half stitch, it doesn't matter that we've gone through the bar. So I think I'm going to put the other one, the other side through the bar. And this side I've got a pink. So again, um, this is the other reason why you put blue plastic on, because you go through the paper. So don't don't do that. Um, I'm like I say, I'm just doing it for um, video in reasons. There's no point in taking shortcuts when you're making your lace because you spend so much time making it, and um, to sort of so a few shortcuts that would be detrimental just isn't worth it so just lengthening this bobbin so again i pulled the um pulled the loop up made sure there's no twists on it and put one through so there we are that's that is that pair in now this is the point where it all gets a little bit tricky because you're dealing with threads and pins and threads and pins get caught up so these are my four pairs ready for my amore and so the first pin i'm going to do is this top one which is my first pin so this is pin one so we're going to do half stitch pin up but we're not going to close the pin we're then going to do the left hand. Now, it really doesn't matter if you do the left or the right first, but I tend to go to the left first. So you will find that you automatically go to one side or the other. So I've half stitched, but I haven't um, closed the pin. So I'm doing the other side, half stitch, but I'm not closing the pin. Then I'm going to do my half stitch in the middle, um, which doesn't get pinned up. Then I'm going to do my half stitch to close my left hand, my half stitch to close my right hand. And then I'm going to do my two center pairs and leave that open. So that's, Mott, that is what your amore looks like and um if you wanted to at the point where you do the two center ones you can add the bead so let's go to this one on the inside where we have three pinholes now the trick to this is working out which number pinholes these are so we have three here and if we look at, uh, I generally, if you can look at the one below, which is a whole one, you will see that that's pin one, two, three, four. So we've got pin one, two, we have no pin four, but we have pin, uh, sorry, we have no pin three, but we have a pin four. So we have one, two, four. However, we want this area here. If you look at our um, more up here, you can see that we've got a decoration going on in this area here that we want to replicate here. 
So the way we do that, this pin here one, we've got one pair to come here. So we need another pair in that for that pin. So that's fine. So let's sew another pair in. So I've got a blue one and that pin, that pair can come off that pin hole. That's going to make that slightly easier. So we've sewn one pair in that we know we definitely need for pin one. So let's do pin one. So that's a half stitch. Half stitch and pin up, but don't close the pin. Now, we know we can do pin three, um, sorry, pin two, because we have this pair here. So we can go ahead and do that. So that's half stitch, pin up, but don't close the um, pin because we got the other bit to do. So this makes this pair here a pair that would normally go and make pin three with another pair. But we don't have another pair and we don't want to be going and sewing in another pair because in actual fact, we have this pair here that can be the both of the pairs from pin three. And I will show you how that works. Because we've got this point here, we can sew this pair in to then come back out as if it had worked pair three, a pin three. So I'm going to put an extra twist on this one because sometimes our twists come off. And I'm going to sew it around that bar. I'll tell you what I'm going to show you with the crochet hook. Okay, I've now sewn this pair in and if you imagine, um, I have just recreated my pin three. So if pin three had been there, it would have been in a straight line from that pin and a straight line to that pin, which would make it this position here. So this pair is actually now, the, in theory, the left hand pair from pin three. So I can now do my half stitch in the middle to recreate the pattern that is in the middle. And then I can close this one, this uh, pin two. And in theory, I should be closing pin three as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an extra twist on and I'm going to create the illusion that I've closed the pin by making another sewing. So I'm sewing another pair into the exact point as if it was coming off of the pin. There we are. And then put a twist on that. So it now looks, even though we didn't have that pin three, it now looks like we have a complete pattern. And we can now use this pair coming from our imaginary pin three to work the bottom pin. So we'll work a half stitch and pin up and leave it open. So we have kept, now you can tell we have kept the... Um, pattern going because if we look back at here we've got two blue lines there which is actually coming from our pink pairs so our pink pairs are going in a line that way our blue pairs are going in a line that way and our green pairs are going in a line in that direction so what we have done by sewing it into the edge is mimicked that pin three to make this a complete pattern. Even though we didn't have all the pinholes, but we had enough pairs to be able to do that. Now this 
when you get to this point here, this uh, when you get to this one, this one will go down in that direction and this pair will go to this pinhole and you will need to sew another pair in up here. So then this pin is a single pin so we can just do that as a half stitch. So let me get some pairs sewn in. So we're looking for a straight line and I think that pin is fairly fairly straight line now just remember that all of your threads are going to be in a single color i'm just putting this in multiple colors so that you can see how the amore works but also where our pairs are going so i'm going with this one on a pinhole now these pinholes where we're sewing the pairs in um, really depend on how your lace, how you pinned up your lace. Um, so just bear that in mind. Just because I'm sewn into a pinhole, you might not necessarily be sewn into a pinhole. It all depends on where your lace falls. So we've got our two pairs on the left, two pairs on the right, and we're catching a whole load of pins. So we're going to do our half stitch pin up and not close the pin. Then we're going to do another half stitch pin up and not close the pin. Half stitch on pin for our pin three, which we actually have this time. So this is the point where you would um, put in a bead. Now I'm going to do the two middle pairs in a half stitch then i can close my left hand pairs and my right hand pairs and then i can do my pin four and that is my amore duck so now if we look at this one down here we've only got two pins we have pin three and pin four because if you look at the line here, it's running in this line and this one is pin three and this one is pin four. So we don't even have pin one and two. But we, in order to do pin three, we need to, to have done pin one. So what we're going to do is mimic pin one by sewing this pair into probably that pin there because it's about the right uh, line so I'm going to put an extra twist on that take my pin out Made my sew in. And I'm going to put a couple of twists on that. Put my pin in. And there we have the pair that would normally have come from pin one. Uh, one. So I'm not going to be able to do pin two. So let's do pin three. Pin up. And remember, we don't close it. Ah, but we have a bit of an issue here because we need to make um, a pattern in the middle. And if we take this pair and sew it in, it will distort the pattern. So what we're going to need to do is sew in another pair that will make it look as though it's come from pin two. So pin two is roughly about here so we'll sew it around that bar that's it now we don't need to worry about putting the pin back in put a couple of twists on so that pair now looks as if it's come from pin two so i can now do the middle of my amore and we won't put a um bead in the middle of this one because we haven't got enough room so now i've got I've got pin three that I can close. So let's close that. 
and I've got one pair to do pin four, but I need to have closed pin two to be able to have done pin pin four. So I'm going to put an extra twist on this pair and I'm going to sew it back in close to where I originally sewed it in. So it looks as if it closed pin four, uh, pin two, all these pin numbers. So there's my loop. Now remember, I put the extra twist on my pair because sometimes when you sew in, you lose a twist and um, I've not been able to work out why and how, but, um, but that's why I'm putting the extra twist on. So now, This pair can work with this pair into pin four and leave it open. So you're making the illusion. So all of these, where I've got part of a um, pinhole, uh, part of a amore, I've made the inside because you want to have that cross in the middle so I've replicated that cross in the middle and um, that's how we we do it where there's a single dot I would just make that a half stitch pin so at this point here we've got pin one and two but we haven't got three and four so you're going to need to replicate pins three and four by sewing in this one here is again one and two so all the way down this inside, we've got one and two. On this point here, we've got one, three, four. So you're going to need to replicate two over at this point here. So you might, you'll find you'll need to sew one pair into there, do the middle and then take it back out again. So I'm hoping this explains how you do the inside fill in this method will be used generally if you do um, Honington lace because generally with Honington you do patterns and shapes and you'll find that the fillings never quite fit so you will always find you'll be doing part of a filling so if you can take it slowly work out what pins you have where the pairs come from for that pin do you need to sew in any extra? Do you need to sew any pairs in to make the pin appear as if it was there? And just take it slowly. And if you really don't want to do it, you can just replace these with half stitch pin, half stitch.